Standing here in front of you, I know that I'm being observed. But do you know whether you are being observed? Maybe we are all being observed. Maybe there is someone on a distant planet around a star other than our sun who is turning a big telescope to the Earth, determined to find out whether there's life on that tiny dot. For those of you that get nervous by the thought of being observed and analyzed by aliens, you can all relax because we have no indications whatsoever yet that there is life outside the Earth. This is our Earth. On Earth, there is life everywhere. Primitive organisms can be found in the driest deserts, below Arctic ice shields, and also on dark ocean floors. And these uh, more advanced organisms that we call humans, they survive everywhere on this planet. Despite, or maybe because of the abundance of life around us, generations of people have asked themselves, are we alone? Is Earth the only planet in the universe with life? People don't like feeling alone, and especially they, they don't like to feel like a coincidence. So astronomers have turned their telescopes to other planets, to neighboring planets, to actually search for life outside the Earth. And this is Venus. Venus is often called Earth's sister planet, because it has the same size. These evenings, if you go out this evening, Venus shines in the sky like the brightest star. It is so bright because it's close to the sun, because it's close to us, and because it's completely covered by clouds, always and everywhere. So Venus is a little bit close to the sun, and so people have thought for a very long time that below the clouds there might be a very warm and wet climate. Yeah, so they thought about uh, lush jungles and swamps teeming with life. And on the night side, they sometimes saw flashes, light flashes in the clouds. And those were sometimes explained as festive fireworks. So the Venusians seemed like uh, neighbors to socialize with. Except that 50 years ago, they found out that uh, there is no water on Venus. An extreme greenhouse effect on Venus actually makes the temperature on the surface 500 degrees centigrade. And there is also no water in the clouds, because those are not made of water, but they are made of sulfuric acid. So even fruit flies would not survive on Venus. Then they turn the telescopes in the other direction, away from the Sun. And there is Mars. Mars is not a sister planet of the Earth, it's more like a little brother. And the atmosphere of Mars is very thin, so most of the time you can look straight through the atmosphere and see the surface. And on the surface, 19th century astronomers, they saw patches of color that changed shapes. And they thought those were growing crops. Uh, and so people thought there might be life on Mars. Well, actually farmers tending their fields. But now we know that Mars is cold and dry. And there is no visible life on the surface. And there is also no liquid water on the surface. But below the surface, there is water ice. And there might be pockets below the surface where tiny organisms feast on liquid water. So if future Mars exploration actually discovers these tiny organisms, that will be groundbreaking news. But they will not really make us feel less alone. Uh, it's like uh, discovering cockroaches in a deserted restaurant. Uh, it does not really improve the atmosphere. So people, people will, will continue to look for advanced forms of life elsewhere. So where should we look? Well, our sun is just a very ordinary star. It is very special to us because, well, we are orbiting the sun. It's the closest star to us. And there are thousands of stars in the night sky every night that are very similar to the sun. And there are even billions times billions of stars out there that we cannot see with our eyes. And so our sun has eight planets around it. Our lively Earth is one of them. So why shouldn't the other stars have planets too? Well, these planets around other stars are extremely difficult to find. But 20 years ago, the first planet around another star was actually discovered. And nowadays we know that almost every star in the sky, stars that we can see and also those that we can't see, has planets. We know that their stars have huge planets made of gas, like Jupiter around our sun. But we also know that stars have small planets, rocky planets like Venus, Earth, and Mars. 
But how can you actually know whether there's life on these planets? Because we know they are there, but we haven't seen them yet. We haven't seen them because it's extremely difficult to capture a picture of one of these planets with the cameras and even the biggest telescopes that we have today. Just to illustrate how difficult this is, this is a picture that is 25 years old already, and this was taken by the Voyager 1 spacecraft while it was flying towards the edge of the solar system. And this picture is taken from 6 billion kilometers away, really on the edge of the outer planets. And, well, the colored stripes are artifacts. That's just sunlight that is reflected in the camera. But there is a little dot there. And that little dot, that is Earth. Yeah, and it shines because it reflects sunlight that is scattered by the clouds, by the oceans, and everything that's on the Earth, also by the people on the Earth. Carl Sagan, a famous American astronomer, who proposed that this this, basically, this ultimate selfie was taken. Uh, he wrote about this dot, this pale blue dot, and amongst others he wrote, consider that dot, that's here, that's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you have ever heard of, everybody who has ever lived, who lived out their lives. So that's a lot of things that are on this little dot, and this dot in the picture is smaller than a single pixel. So this picture was taken from a distance of 6 billion kilometers. Well, that's not even close to the distance to the nearest star. So try to imagine what the picture would look like if you were about 10,000 times further away than this. If you would then still be able to picture a little dot of a planet around another star, how would you then know what the planet looks like? Whether it looks like Earth and whether there is life on that planet? So that's what we want to find out. And we can find out how you can find that out by looking at our own Earth, by looking at ourselves. And that's precisely what we want to do. So what do we want to know? Well, we want to know whether there's liquid water on the planet, because all life needs liquid water. We also want to know whether there are continents on this little dot, because there are continents, organisms can live and die on the continents. And we also want to know, for example, whether it rotates, is there a day-night pattern? And are there clouds? And what are the clouds made of? Are they made of sulfuric acid, like on Venus? Or are they made of water, like on Earth? So, computer calculations that we are doing tell us that you cannot derive this information from just one single snapshot, like this famous pale blue dot picture. What you need to do is that you have to monitor the color changes and the brightness changes of a little dot like this, as it travels around its star. So you have to monitor it continuously, and from that you can derive the information that you want to have. But our simulations, our computer calculations, also show us something else that you should measure. Well, and of course, from physics, you all remember that light can be described as a wave. Uh, and waves on an ocean, they move up and down. But light waves can move in any direction except for the light waves that are reflected by a planet. These light waves uh, vibrate in a certain direction, and how they vibrate, that depends on what a planet looks like. Well, so, by measuring the direction of the light waves, you can find out about the planet, whether there's life, well, whether there's oceans, whether there's clouds, whether there are continents. Well, this trick, measuring the wave direction, uh, was already known for some time, because that was precisely the trick that was used to find out uh, what the clouds of Venus were made of. And so it's not very new, but such measurements have never been done from the Earth. So that's what we want to do. And we are building, with students, we are building a very small instrument that can be placed on the Moon. It will work autonomous, so I don't have to go there actually. So it will work by itself and it will look at the Earth. And it will look at the Earth from far away. So why the Moon? Why do you not go to 6 billion kilometers away? Well, that's not very practical. That's really far away. And the Moon is the perfect place for an instrument like this. Because sitting on the Moon, you can see the whole Earth at once. So you can get everything that's on the Earth in one picture. 
Sitting on the moon, you will also be able to see the Earth rotate, the daily rotation of the Earth. So you will see continents emerging from the dawn and disappearing over the limb of the planet. That's what you want to observe. What's also very nice of the moon is that it always has the same side turned towards the Earth. Maybe you know that, sometimes people don't know, but the moon always looks the same to us. That's because it always has the same side turned towards the Earth. And so if you are sitting on that side with your instrument, the Earth will always be in the sky, in the lunar sky. That's very nice because then you can do your measurements continuously and capture all the details that you have to capture. So we want to put our instrument on the moon and do these test measurements. So then we have measurements that show us what the Earth looks like. And we can use those measurements to interpret signals of planets really far away around distant stars. So I've been observed enough and I look forward to the day that we will all be able to observe ourselves from the moon with our instrument. Thank you.